Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and this is part two of my video on how to use a Geiger counter and a little bit about radioactivity as well. Here's our Geiger counter and if you remember from the first part of the video and you should watch the first part because I'm not going to go back and explain all of it we're trying to tell a little bit of information about this plate. Now, I happen to know for a fact that it's producing alpha and gamma but I'll prove it to you. First off, let's take proper precautions. Notice it's in a bag. The bag blocks some of the alpha and it doesn't let any any gas that could come out of this like radon or whatever that could be in there and there could technically be there is uranium in it it doesn't let particles get out that can get into you because uranium that's in this is actually very very toxic to the body as a heavy metal like lead forget the radioactivity for a moment just the metal toxicity itself is actually very deadly uranium is actually more deadly as a heavy metal than it is as uh, being radioactive although don't, don't get me wrong, it is quite radioactive. Now, let me put on my gloves. Hold on a second, let me put, put this down. Okay. Now I have on my glove. This is probably over-precautious, but as far as I'm concerned, you can never be too precautious. Now, here it is. Vaseline glass. I intend to prove to you that this produces alpha and gamma. First off, we know that alpha can be stopped by a simple piece of paper. So let's see what we get. Let me flip that over for you. There. Now, you should be able to see what's on it. Okay. Does that work? Now, Give it a second to get up there. We know that it generally puts off approximately 56.2. It's climbing slowly. Now let me move this. And I will put a folded piece of paper. Still making it through? Not of paper. <laughs> That should do it. Notice with the booklet, there's still going to be readings because it's putting off gamma, but watch that. We know for a fact, as I've already proven it to you, this thing runs 56.2 counts per minute on average. It is now dropped. It has dropped to... What is that, 32? 31. It's in the 30s. It's pretty high, but it's not 56. If I get rid of this paper, it will go right up to 50. Now, because of this fact, we can probably safely say that we are producing about 30, about 32 counts per minute of alpha. See, it's going up now. All right. Okay. See, it's going up to where it should be now again. But if we put that paper in between, Give it a moment to go down. It takes a minute for this thing because it actually d develops a statistical table of sorts in its little mind. Notice the rates are falling. And they will continue to fall until this thing gets down to 30 something. Statistically average, of course, it'll jump up sometimes. But you notice it is dropping. There it goes. See, it's going down. Now, let's see what happens when we put metal in front of it. Here is a thin sheet of aluminum. That cuts off a pretty fair amount 
of everything, leaving only uh, the gamma particles going through. Aluminum generally will stop beta, so we know we probably don't have too much beta, and we know the alpha has been cut back pretty heavily, so we know whatever's left over is probably gamma, right? 50, now it's 37, 39. Okay, let's put something else in front of it. Here is a thicker sheet of steel. Again, these are technically speaking sort of thin sheets. Now it's really starting to quiet down. Now it's really quieting down, but you see now we've pretty much gotten rid of anything else that's in this. We're getting straight pure gamma now. And it's about what we guessed. It's about 32 counts per minute of gamma. And I know that it's generally around 30 or so. I've run this thing myself longer. Let's double check this. Let me get a thick sheet. Big, big plate of steel. It's starting to eat up some of those gammas. That stops it dead. It's still there, but getting closer to background now. But you notice it's still significantly higher than the background. Background we know to be around 12. Well, maybe not. Could be getting pretty close to the end of it. Now this thing will actually read better if we put it on its side like this, because that'll expose more of the tube. Remember what I said about surface area? The tube in here looks like a double-A battery, so more of it is exposed if you do it this way. Now let's put a little bit more on top. Oh god, let's put this big slab of uh, concrete, oh boy, right on top. That should do it. And now we finally stopped it all. And just to recap, see all the sheet, all the sheets underneath there. Whew. Still ticking. Still ticking more than background, which is around 12. So in short, you can see it's hard to stop gamma. If I had a couple millimeters of lead, though, that would do it. Look at that. Now, for the next part of the video, I'm going to go through a little bit of detail about how the actual Geiger counter is used itself, and I'm going to put away this toy because I really don't like being around it for too long. So anyway, stay tuned for the next part. Ooh, but before I go, let me get rid of all of this and do what I know that you like. Because you know that what you really like is this. I'll leave you with this for a few seconds because in the second part of this video I'm going to talk about how to use this thing correctly and how to test in things with it. So that's the next part. Nice good juicy spot. Look at that. Nice, good, juicy spot. We're going to teach you how best to use this thing next video. But this was the, the startup part. Never drop your metal pieces. They make a lot of noise. Anyway, this is Tom from Anti-Proton. Bye-bye.